My name is Rodrigo Correa from Numeca, Germany. I will be showing you a nice feature that could add flexibility to your projects. You might already know that Numeca has a Python API and a scripted language that allows CFD tasks automation such as domain creation, meshing, simulation setup, and post-processing. That life hack will address the possibility to combine our scripted language with a tailored graph user interface and how that feature could be helpful. Imagine you are the responsible person to automate the machine generation or the post-processing in order to be used to your entire team. You will make use of our scripting language and end up with a Python script. Then, you need to present it to your colleagues, making sure that everyone will use it properly, reducing the possibility of file corruption or improper modification of the source code. When giving to other colleagues the source code to be used as part of a design workflow, you should document it in a way that people do not make mistakes easily. You need to explain the code over and over again. In the end, you find out that the majority of the errors will not come from the program itself, but from the modifications other people perform on the code. So, how to avoid those issues? I find that the best solution to reduce the margin for mistakes is via graphic user interface, where the input data is concise and clear, and most importantly, users do not need to interact with the source code, only the people involved in the code development. What I have on my screen is the NASA Transonic Rotor 37. You can find it in our online documentation under Find Turbo. Demo cases, demo case 4. We will check together how one could automate the generation of a control plot in the Blades Blade view. Let's have a look at how it can be done manually. To start, we should load the simulation result, and that's what, it, that's what you see in your canvas. Then, we create our Blades Blade view. We do that by pressing the button Blades Blade. Then, you will be presented with that dialog box where the user need to specify the spinwise location. I'll be using 0 0.85. You press apply and then you check if this is the location you want to have. In case yes, you press save. And when you press save, you're gonna have your cut being listed under surfaces. Now you have selected the entire row plus the cut. If I just want to have the cut, I click on it, right click, select. Okay. My surface is selected, now I need to select my flow quantity. In that case, I'm going to be using entropy. And now we should decide how we want to represent it. So under representations, I go to contour. And here I have three options, smooth contour, strip contour, and flat contour. For that demonstration, I'll be using strip contour. And when, you, when, you, when I press that, I get two informations in the color map. One, is, one are the stripes, and the second one is the smooth contour of the entropy over that cut. If I just want to show stripes, I click on it, right click, stripes only. Let's imagine we are happy with that scene, and then we want to generate a picture of that. If I want to generate a picture, I go to File, Print, and here you can give some settings. Uh, so the standard one is going to be this one, 1920 by 1080, I press OK. And I want to save it where my demo case for simulation was ran. And here I write entropy, then B2B, and I save. Then I'm going to get a picture here, entropy B2B. If I open it, and I get exactly the same scene we are seeing in the canvas. Perfect. Now, we can have a look at the commands need for automating these tasks. Every action the user perform is recorded by safe view. You can access the code via fi fi file, macro, save all. And here I'm going to save it as, again at the same location. And I'm going to give the name macro, recorded, save. Now we just got a new file pop up my text editor and open it. And look, everything we did can be reconstructed by 10 lines of code. 
with very small modifications we can end up with a pretty solid routine which can be shared between coworkers. However, there will be always the need to open it and change the input data, and that can be the path, the spin wise, or the flow quantity to be plot. And that's where everything can happen, and you as a developer has no control over it. In the end, that that approach works, but it's quite prone to errors. As we have now our code, how can I run it? Let me just minimize that. I'm going to close that scene. And now I want to execute that code here. How do I do that? I can either press the key K or go to File, Macro, Execute. Then I give the path where my Python file is located and I run it. Ah, let me just delete the entropy because we should generate that picture. We run it and we have it. Perfect. So that's one way to go. And we could, we could just take that file, try to make it the most user friendly as possible, but just have in mind that doesn't matter the amount of effort you do to make that task a bit, let's say, easier and easier there'll be always the need to open it and change it manually. The second option is I press K again, which is file, macro, execute. Okay, and now I'm gonna run my second script, which is now using a graphic user interface, this one. And we are basically doing the same steps here. And actually I just added one more before I showed you how to use B2B and here the user also has the option to make radio cuts. Okay, so let's then give our path. So the user browse the path and here you can just go through the folders or paste the path. And what's happened when I press OK, all the available simulations are populated inside that simulation combo box. So here I have one, two, three simulations. If I just Open it, I have one, two, three simulations. Nice. So here I can basically choose which simulation I want to post process. Let's take uh, simulation 001. And now I create a radio cut. My, the location will be 0 0.2 meters. And here I so I ask which are the quantities you want to plot. So I he here I can basically show all the possibilities or basically the quantities I normally use. So let's see, let's say that you want to plot all of them using absolute values and now I'm asked which uh, which control plot do you want to use a smooth contour or a strip in that case I'm going to be using smooth here I give the resolution of the picture and also a folder name and what is that folder name the folder name is basically the folder which is going to be created inside that simulation or the simulation you choose here yeah it could be any of those and inside this folder, there will be one, two, three, four pictures. And if you just don't select math number, then you're going to have only three. Okay, we are doing radio cuts, right? So then I'm just write radio cut. That's the name of my folder. So inside the simulation 001, when I press apply, I should be getting a folder. Folder is there. Now my first picture is there. That's related to math number and then total pressure, then total temperature, and entropy. So I can open it, and I basically see the radio cut and the flow quantities plotted over it. Nice. Now, the user can also create a B2B, and let's use 0 0.2, for instance. And now I don't want to have my number, and I also don't want to have total temperature, and I will change the name of the folder. So inside of that simulation, simulation one, I should be getting another folder called B2B with one, two pictures, right? So we have now our first picture, then our second picture. So if I now open it, you see 0 0.2 spin wise, and I have entropy and total pressure. Now, if you say, ah, I forgot to add my number, you can just select my number, apply again. So as the folder already exists, you don't need to create it. That file then will be just created inside the existing folder. And there we are, entropy is also created. 
And that's basically what I mean by flexibility. There is no space here for user mistakes and the user does not need to open the source code. And in that case, I showed a turbo machinery example, but it is valid for any application. For instance, for fine marine users, we can think about creating free surface representation, pressure contour, white plus, wetted surface, nominal all, effective weight contour, and so on. And in case you are just starting with scripting, that's that could be one example that you could use as a first project and automate the post-processing and speed up the report generation to your customers. And the idea, so that idea is a general, and you can extrapolate that to your own needs. The main purpose of that life hack is to tell you that this feature exists. If you find this feature useful and believe that it could improve your current workflow and the communication between your design team, send us your feedback so that we know we should put more effort on teaching you how to create graphic user interfaces. Depending on the acceptance of that idea, we will create an extension of that life hack entirely on how to create my own GUI. After learning that, you will be able to connect it to your own routines. And we are done. That's everything I had to say. We would appreciate to have your feedback on the quality of the video and its content. But most importantly, we need to have the feedback on your interest in that topic. Thank you very much and see you soon.